The new Mantis X10 Fire Amp's performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Um, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra and we're doing our Manus Dry Fire Daily Challenge. Uh, they sponsor this. I'm going to give you the option to do it with the Manus or without the Manus, but it's still a very good skill drill. Uh, what it is is an average of 10 shots. They call it their benchmark, and that's a very important thing to think. What is the average of your 10 shots? So if I add all 10 shots together and then divide by 10, what do I get? The average of my shots. Now I did this earlier, and uh, my average was 95.2 on my my presses. I had some that were 91.2, I had one that was 91.2, and I had one that was 98.4, so that's about a seven point difference. And you see I meet right in the middle of that. So my expectation for a group of shots would be 95. That also means that I could deviate three points either way. So how do we practice this? This is a drill expressly for you to develop your trigger control and your sight movie. To observe it. If we're going to be good shooters, we have to be really observers of what we do. We have to pay close attention to what we're doing. But the problem is most people are worried about the bad last shot, which is living in the past, and a lot of people are worried about the next shot, whether it'll be good or bad, which is living in the future. Uh, you know, it's interesting, the word sin uh, comes from archery, and it means to miss the mark. So we have sinned when we don't shoot well. So you can put that in there and, and think about that a little bit. We need to do a good job. Don't have regrets. Observe what you're doing and correct your behavior in the moment, in the now, not in the future or the past. That doesn't help you at all. Um, boy, is that a hard skill to develop as a human being? You have to really observe what we're doing. Okay? We have an average of 10. What I'd like you to do is keep the trigger moving. We have three trigger speeds, Tom Givens. We have care, uh, quickly, carefully, and precisely. And in my experience with most shooters, you have one trigger speed. You're either precise or quick. Uh, some some pretty decent shooters have two trigger speeds, and that's good too, but this kind of gives you a modulation of how quickly we should press the throttle. We're going to press the throttle on the gun, which is the trigger, and give it gas, but how quickly do we need to leave? All right? Imagine navigating a very narrow space and you jam the, the accelerator on it. You're probably going to hit the walls or hit the car next to you. If you have a wide open road and you're on the Autobahn and there's no speed limit, you can hit that th throttle as fast as you want to. So that's what we're doing on the gun. The thing that will dictate how fast we can do it is what we need to see. So it's going to be very different if I'm shooting one of those little circles or I'm shooting that big humanoid target or if there's something in the way. So let me show you guys how this works. Uh, I've got the Manus on the bottom right here. I'm not going to hook it up. I shot the 10 shots so you don't have to watch me shoot because that's really boring. Uh, you should be practicing instead of watching me shoot. All right. I have uh, safety caps in here, uh, dummy rounds that are not bullets, they're orange colored, and that way I know I'm safe with it. I've cleared my gun. Okay. What I'm going to do is put this in here, then I'll load it and check. Okay. Everything's good. Okay, so now I know I have a gun that's not capable of firing. I moved all my ammunition out of the area, so I can't accidentally put a live mag in there since I don't have the train safe disabler in there. Uh, this is another way for you guys to practice. So the idea with the Manus X is to do the best trigger press that you can. Keep the trigger moving. Much like rowing a canoe, we need to keep the action equal, and we need to keep rowing on both sides. What that means is your finger should touch both sides of the trigger, and you should press as carefully, quickly, or precisely to the rear as you can. Now, if you see my finger, I'm bending it only in the knuckle. This is a precision shooting technique. What we do is we take up the biological slack here, so that has a curve down, which flattens the finger and allows us to pretty much push straight back. We can't really because this is a circle, but what happens is the other circle, if I relax that right there, gets it. Now, your mileage will change because, you know, I got big hands. Some of you are just going to be barely on that. Remember, fitment of your gun is really important. You need to be able to reach the trigger. If you if you bought an HK and you can change the grip panels, that's really easy, all right? If you bought a, some other brands, you may have to send it off and get, you know, uh, it changed so it fits your hand better. It's important. We need to be able to get our whole finger on it. I'm not saying the middle. Some people shoot towards the edge. Some people shoot here. What's important is the motion. Not where the finger touches, but how we get the motion. What I'd like you guys to do is think about getting on both sides of that trigger. If you have a wide, flat face, make sure you feel both edges as you press that trigger. So here's what the drill looks like. Get a good grip on the gun. 
I'm going to aim at the camera and I'm aiming, there's a screw just below on the stand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press to the rear, I'll keep it moving. I'm not going to hold and press and then try to do it real quickly. I start moving, cleaning up the sight movie. That's a Gabe White turn. Uh, he made it. That's my attribution. Uh, sight movie is a really good way to think about it. I'm going to see that always in motion. It will never stay still. Human beings work on frequency, not amplitude. You can't squeeze necessarily harder. You're getting a frequency signal. That's why we see world-class gymnasts that shake. You have a little bit of motion always. We're not, we're not a clamp. We can't hold things still. So we constantly want to see what that, that sight is telling us and we want to clean it up. So if I have the Manus X, I do 10 shots on here. I get my average. Uh, the next page will show me where they are. Um, it's kind of a, a circle. It gives you the average. You know, this one's are high, this one's low. You notice I don't have much deviation right and left. And that's what I see in my shooting constantly. I, I don't have a lot of right and left misses, but sometimes I have high or low. The high tends to be, especially when you're doing a precision shot, pressing slowly and looking over the side a little bit, letting the wrist break. And that shows me how much, you know, it's pretty even. Uh, the trigger press is the yellow and the hold movement is the blue. So I'm not taking a lot of time on that. It's pretty even. And then I can pick one and play it back to see what happened during that, how much aiming, how much work I was doing, and what it looks like, and how precise that was. So it's very useful. Um, you know, precision shooters, man, we had to have notebooks, you know, we called them dope books, and it was data on pre previous engagements, and you kept writing to yourself, well, this is doing it for you. This is the history of my shooting here, and I can go back and look and see if I'm improving and what my scores were. So that's a really helpful thing for a shooter. Now, if you don't have one of these, still, you're involved in the drill. In dry practice, you do what we call calling the shot. Uh, Steve Anderson says, see the dot, call the shot. It's a good, good thing if you have a dot. I don't have a rhyme for front sight, so you can make it up. You know, uh, But what you want to do is at the moment that the striker or the hammer releases, you know where that sight is. So if I'm pressing right here, Okay. What I saw at the moment it released, it was actually a little high and right, and it just dropped slightly. In it would have been a very good shot, but that's because I was cleaning it up. Okay, that one probably went a little high. Okay, let my uh, I, I looked through it a little bit. I'm looking at the target here, and I get my finger moving, and off I go. Don't pin the trigger to the rear. Um, once you fire the shot, and you hold it like that, and the weapon cycles and you keep aiming, now you got to release it, watch my muzzle, and then I start all over again. So uh, Jerry Mikulik calls it aiming with a dead gun. That's a really good idea. The pinning and pressing is aiming with a dead gun. A lot, of, a lot of precision shooters do that because we have long barrels and there's an exit time and we have to follow through. But with a handgun, you don't gain anything for it. Um, so I would do uh, what Claude Warner told me. They do at Rogers, which is the, the flip and reset. You're going to flip the trigger and get ready, ready to reset it again. You want to be pressing that trigger and being ready to go. So you can practice that in dry practice. Start calling your shots. You know, you don't know where they go in dry practice, but what we're practicing is observing our sights. And you should be able to see the gun in recoil. You should see the brass kicking out because you're observing. Now here's a good way to do it live fire. Take a B8 repair center. 10, 9, 8, 7, and outside. You score it this way. Uh, 9 is 1 point down, 8 is 2 points, 7 is 3 points, and a miss is 10 points down. Shoot 10 shots, start at 5 yards, which is a pretty easy distance. That's a car length, important for self-defense. And see what average score you get. So uh, count the points off. So you're 7 points down total. You have a 93, and that's your score. Um, it's really useful because that will start giving you an average press and you're going to see a pattern that establishes itself over and over again. So 10 shots, 5 yards, um, there's no time limit on it, it's not a time drill, but see how perfectly you can shoot. If you're getting 100, then what do you need to do? You need to move, move the target further back. Do it at 7 yards, do it at 10 yards, do it at 15 yards, do it at 25 yards, and try to really improve that. Once all that gets easy, then add the timer to it. All right. Try to do it on a two-second cadence, do it on one-second cadence, do it on a half-second cadence, do it on a quarter cadence, and see what your trigger press looks like. We know acceptably that we'll see some difference in it. That's one thing that Manus does really easy for you guys, but you can do that at the range, and you can call your shots at home.
Remember, we're not going faster or slower. Um, speed is relative to our engagement. All right. So if you're really not paying attention to something, things go by really quick. And if you're really involved in it, things can go by really quick also, or very slowly. So our concept of speed is relative to how much attention we're paying. So pay attention, observe what you're doing, and you'll see a big difference in your shooting. Don't worry about the time. Use the timer to gauge it because you're gonna find some things that felt really slow tend to be much faster because you were totally engaged with it. And things that felt really fast, you, when you try to replay it in your mind, you'll notice that maybe you weren't paying the same attention that you needed to, okay? Stay in the process. It's always about process. Um, we, we're going to press the trigger to the rear, we're going to clean up the sight movie, and then we're going to release the trigger and get ready for the next shot. Now, if we're not going to shoot again, all right, we release the trigger completely, we take our finger off into a safe position, our sights come off the target. So the safety rules tell us what to do. Finger goes to the trigger when sights are on the target, and we've made a decision to shoot. If we decided not to shoot, finger comes off the trigger, and the sights come off the target. It's really simple. That's a simple thing, but hard to do in real life. So practice this drill, get in that habit of just gently pressing as you work it. There, the sight pictures, remember, are flash, floating, and focus. Flash means, boom, I just see that red dot in the center, and it's a big target, like that IDPA guy right there, and I can shoot that shot because I have plenty of space to put it in. I can make it acceptable. Okay? If uh, I have to shoot maybe this guy right here, uh, it's going to be floating inside that box. I just can't let it go outside the edges of that box. That's going to be my floating. And if I'm going to shoot the X out of this target, it's going to be focused. I'm really going to uh, focus in on that. So that's the practice for the Manus X benchmark drill. Uh, you can really improve your trigger press. You don't have to have the Manus. It's just very helpful. And hopefully this will uh, help you understand the tools that you have now with this, this unit, which is incredibly useful of keeping information and tracking what you're doing. Uh, things that people aren't very good at, frankly. Okay? Uh, so I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Uh, you can find us on social media and you check out our website. If you need any help, please reach out to me. I'd like to thank Active Self Protection for allowing me to do this. John and the whole staff, Stephanie, Neil, all you guys are just awesome. And I'm incredibly grateful to spend time with all you wonderful folks that want to get better at shooting. The questions have been great. The interaction's been great. It's very positive. And I'm glad that I, I can help some of you guys. Know also that you're helping me. Hey, it's a two-way street. We're all learning. We're all getting better all the time. So keep on practicing, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the range. Thanks.